My name is Russ Elsner. I'm in the Office of CTO with ScienceLogic, and I'm here to tell you about our approach to providing context to AI ops. You'll hear us talk a lot about three elements, see, contextualize, and act. I'm here to talk about contextualize. Some vendors look at the problem of IT as just a big data problem. If I collect enough raw data, enough unstructured information, I then know everything. That hasn't worked. A next generation of vendors has said, well, wait, let's just start with big data and apply machine learning to that, and that'll solve the problems. That's not going to work either. We fundamentally think there's a missing part to that story, and it comes through topology that provides context to drive the machine learning so that ultimately you have actionable insights and you can drive automation. Let me show you how. What are we looking at here? What I've drawn up on top is a classic application map, where we're looking at the application components and which pieces are involved in delivering a service. We have a front end, we have back ends, we might have back end databases. This is a fairly common picture that you would get from a typical APM vendor. Problem is, as great as this is, you tend to only have this for 10, 20% of your applications where you have APM involved. Well, what about the other 80% of your applications? This is a very useful and critical part to the overall problem, and let's call this an east-west map, right? Because it goes east to west. So what's all the stuff below this? Every single one of these components has to sit in and be driven by a complex set of technology. Virtual, ephemeral, containers, network, storage. Let's dive in and see what I mean by that. This particular application component is maybe running in a container. Right? That container might be running in a VM. That VM sits on a hypervisor. That hypervisor sits on a blade. And that blade sits on a chassis. All of this has to exist with a network. And on top of that network, you tend to have virtual networks on top of it, whether it's SDN or VLANs. So you have a virtual layer to that network. On the other side of this, we have storage. That VM is provisioned to use a LUN. That LUN sits and uses a volume. That volume sits on a server. But think about this. That container isn't the only container there. It has all sorts of relationships neighbors, things that can affect it. That VM is going to be one of many VMs on that hypervisor. That hypervisor is going to be on that, uh, be many, one of many hypervisors on the blades and in the chassis. That VM might be connected to this LUN, but there's lots of LUNs. That LUN sits on a volume. You get the idea that this is an interconnected web of dependencies. Each one has its direct relationships, but also neighbors that can affect it. And go back to this being a container. This entire infrastructure uh, hierarchy only exists for the length of that container's lifespan. If that container uh, gets spun down and another one gets spun up, an entirely different set of uh, infrastructure gets utilized with different relationships and different dependencies. This is what I mean by context. Without context, if you just look at this as a big data problem, how do you know which one is the one that affects your application? Is this the one that affects the uh, QA? set or the production set. If you have a network problem, how do you know where it's affecting? If your VM moves or spins up, how do you know which one is important to the overall surface? And remember, this is one uh, topology stack of all of your servers, and this is just one server application of many different applications in your network. This is what I mean by topology. If you treat this just as a big data problem and all you just have is unstructured raw data, not, you have no relationships and no ability to form context. What's important? What's not important? Science logic takes a different approach. We form the context, understanding the relationships between the different layers, both direct con uh, relationships as well as neighbor relationships. And this is what we use to feed the analytics and machine learning to create actionable insights. So let's go back and see how this all fits together. How does this help create an automation engine for AI ops? The first step is C. You have to collect data from all of these different technologies, all of these different components. And you have to use lots of different techniques. Sometimes it's polling, sometimes it's APIs, sometimes it's uh, logs, sometimes it's events. Taking all of this data from all of these different layers and fusing it into a clean data lake. So this is, at its beginning, a big data problem. Absolutely. But that's not the end. The next thing you have to do is provide context to that data. The data has to make sense. You have to align different data from different sources to provide a holistic view of each piece and it's that piece's relationship with its neighbors and with the other layers. So context becomes a critical piece in which then you can then apply analytics and machine learning on top of this topology to create actionable insights. Understanding exactly what's going on, what needs to be fixed, streamline the process of uh, running IT in an automated and highly efficient way. 
This, we think, is the real approach and the best approach for an automation engine for AI ops.